Here's the deal friends, I've been doing this tech stuff for a very long time, but would you believe that there's a whole bunch of motherboard vendors or motherboard manufacturers products that I've never ever seen, let alone even used. And that's where this board comes in. This my friends is the colorful CVN X870 Arc Frozen V14. I've only got one real question about this motherboard though. Where are the other 13 boards? But before we can answer that question, here is a word from today's video sponsor. Take it away, Claire. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo, bingo. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. All right, here it is, ladies and gents, the colorful CVN X870 Arc Frozen V14. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this board. And spoiler alert, there's not a whole lot that comes with this board. First of all, we've got the user manual. This is mainly in Chinese, not really in English, which is to be expected for a motherboard from Colorful. We've also got some RGB extension and adapter cables. This is essentially just for converting any other RGB standard to three pin five volt addressable RGB. We also have some M.2 standoffs and some screws for the M.2 slots on this board. However, as you're about to find out, these aren't really required because the M.2 slots have their own clips to hold drives into place. There's also this little breakout header. This will break out USB 2.0 motherboard headers. This is something that I haven't seen in about 20 years. So a yeah. bit of a strange one in case you've got a really odd case, it's useful. Other than that, there is a front panel breakout header as well. This will allow you to plug in all your stuff outside of your case and then plug your cables into your motherboard easily. Finally, there's also two SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your three and a half hard disks or spinning rust drives. And that's about it for what's included. Let's unsheath this board from Colorful and take a little bit of a closer look at what makes this board tick. And it's a pretty interesting one if I'm being honest, guys. First up, we have our front panel audio header. We have a four pin analog 12 volt RGB header, a three pin five volt addressable RGB header, as well as a PWM fan header. There's a serial port header in case you wanted to use that for some reason. There's also a PC speaker header in case you wanted to use that for some reason. Two USB 2.0 headers, and then the header for all the lights and all your switches to turn on your system as well as another PWM fan header and a clear CMOS header. There's another PWM fan header. There's four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives, a USB type C front panel header. There's then a USB 3.2 front panel type A header, another PWM fan header, the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new motherboard, and then another three pin five volt addressable RGB header, as well as a postcode debug LED array on the surface of the board, just to help you with getting your system up and running if you're running into any problems. On the top right hand edge, we have two PWM fan headers, as well as another three pin five volt addressable RGB header. On the top left, we've got two EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new Ryzen 7000, 8000 or 9000 processor. As for the PCIe slots on this board, there's a single PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot up top. There's a PCIe 4.0 by 4 slot in a by 16 size in the middle, and then a PCIe 3.0 by 1 slot right at the bottom. There is a quick release mechanism for the top PCIe slot on this board. It's a very interesting one. It's got a kind of power switch. Just take a listen to this. You can hear how solid this thing is. Out of all of the release mechanisms, this is one of the better ones that I've seen to date. As for the VRM layout, it features a 14 plus 2 plus 1 phase VRM layout with 80 amp Dr. Moss power stages. I gotta say, the heat sinks on this board are absolutely massive and they're super dense, making the board very, very heavy. And to be honest, these are some of the most solid motherboard heat sinks I've ever seen for a VRM. This board has standard AM5 cooler mounting and it has the mounting brackets pre-installed on the motherboard. So 
Nothing too exciting here, although that soccer cover is kind of cool and transparent. I wonder if they did that on purpose. Let's pop open that AM5 socket. This is a bit of a composite shot with two shots stitched into one. And what you'll notice is this is a very standard AM5 socket with nothing too exciting going on here. The reason why I show this is for people who've never built a PC before, who have never seen inside an AM5 socket. And this is great for educational purposes or just in case you're curious. If we flip the board over, you can see there's not a lot going on here. And what I mean by that is there's less surface mount components on this board compared to almost any other board that I've ever seen, especially for AM5 boards. And I'm wondering if this is on purpose. As for RAM, this board supports up to 192 gigs of DDR5 memory at up to 8400 mega transfers. Remember guys, this is the specification, not a recommendation. This is what the board should technically do. Alrighty, let's rip off the M.2 heat sinks on this board so we can take a little bit of a look at the three M.2 slots on this board. There is two PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots on this board. The one at the top is PCIe Gen 5, the one in the middle is PCIe Gen 5, and the one at the bottom is a PCIe Gen 4x4 M.2 slot. As with most modern motherboards, the M.2 slots have quick release clips on them, so you don't need to use any screws when installing drives. For rear I.O., we've got DisplayPort, we've got HDMI, we've got a BIOS update button, there's four USB 3.2 5 gig ports, two USB 2.0 ports, we've got five gigabit Ethernet via the Realtek RTL 8126 CG 5 gig adapter, as well as a 10 gig USB 3.2 port, a 40 gig USB 4.0 port. This is technically Thunderbolt because it will allow for PCIe tunneling. There's also antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. This board uses the MediaTek MT7925 Wi-Fi 7 controller. As for the audio interface, it is a full 7.1 surround sound setup with optical slash spdif output via the Realtek ALC1220 codec, and they also use that as the DAC. I thought we would do something a little bit different and take a bit of a look at what the BIOS for this colorful board looks like, considering I've never ever used a colorful board before, and I wanted to see what was going on here. First of all, this is the basic layout. I'm guessing this is what it looks like when it's a fresh board out of the box with no advanced mode settings. And at a glance, this isn't too bad. It's got some RGB control here. It's got the audio toggle. You've got your ethernet toggle. It's got pixie toggling, which I think is quite cool for someone like me. If you don't know, you can use this for network booting. Got some other information at a glance. We've got CPU temperature, the CPU frequency, motherboard temperature, memory voltage, CPU voltage, all that stuff, as well as some fan speeds and your fan curves here. We've got the easy overclock with default mode and PBO and boot priority. I don't have an M.2 in this. This is purely just to see what the BIOS looks like on this board. We'll switch over to advanced mode. It's almost a mix between an MSI BIOS and a BIOS without any skin on it. In the OC menu, it says our CPU, it says our frequencies, as well as the TDP the CPU is running at. And this is basically what you'd see in any other BIOS. If you go to advanced CPU configuration, the same kind of stuff here. Uh, it, it's nothing too different from what we've seen with other BIOSes. We've also got the memory settings. We can change the frequency and timing and that kind of stuff. If we hit advanced, this is essentially what you're gonna find in any other BIOS. So this isn't looking any different to any other BIOS. But one thing that you may be interested in is the monitoring stuff. So we have all of the fan speed control and whatnot here. If we go into CPU fan configuration, we can change the mode. If we go manual mode, you can set the thermal offset as well as the PWM percentage as well. But I think in easy mode, this is probably the way that you'd want to set up your fan curves. This is actually quite good because it does allow you to do this very easily. It gives you the RPM readout as well. This is all looking fairly decent and not terrible. Although something I find a bit strange is when we click exit, we've got a bunch of QR codes to go to different websites. Yeah, haven't seen that before. And it says Colorfire, not colorful. Maybe uh, it's called Colorfire in another region.
Hope you guys enjoyed taking a little bit of a look at this new board from Colorful, the CVN X870 Arc Frozen V14. The truth is there's not 13 other versions of this board because this is Colorful's first AMD based motherboard. Seeing a company like Colorful make an AMD motherboard kind of tells you what's going on in the industry. It means that even motherboard manufacturers and vendors have no faith in Intel making a viable platform. Almost all of these boards that we're seeing at the moment that are any good are AM5. And to be honest, I don't have a problem with that. I think what this really means is Intel needs to come and clap back to all of these vendors making nice AMD boards with a very strong offering with their next CPU generation. Hopefully we'll see something at Computex this year. It's only about three and a half weeks away. We'll be there in Taipei, right there on the scene, letting you know what's happening day to day. So make sure you subscribe to see all of our Computex Taipei 2025 coverage. As far as pricing and availability for this board here, uh, it's almost non-existent at this point. There's no pricing available. Essentially what Colorful did earlier this month was, hey, look, this is our first AM5 board, get amongst it, come take a look at it, we've got this thing. And as far as I can see, no one's really even seen this board yet in person. When Colorful reached out and said we've got a new motherboard, I was like, yeah, let, let's, let's take a bit of a look at this thing because it does look interesting. As for the design of the board, it's got a 17 phase VRM, which is fairly adequate. I gotta say, one thing that really stood out to me was the top GPU latch. I really like that, that's very simple. Again, that sound is, it's, it's very, very loud. As far as the PCB itself, one thing I noticed is it has a very thin PCB, but on the surface of the board, it's very, what's the word? It's, it's kind of minimal. There's not that many surface mount components. This could mean one of two things. First of all, it could mean that they're going for this aesthetic to make the board look a little bit cleaner from a visual standpoint. The second option is it could be terrible, but we don't know that for sure because as far as you guys have seen and as far as I've seen, it's, it's a motherboard that you put a CPU on. Let us know what you think about this board from Colorful. I think it's pretty interesting considering I've never used one of their boards before and that's almost insane for me to think about. There's almost no main motherboard vendors boards that I haven't used. I've even used heaps of those like Huanan, like the Chinese boards where they get the chipset and they put it on new PCBs, X79 and X99 and all that stuff. But a company like Colorful, which is very well known in the industry, it's yeah, it's shocking that I haven't used one of their boards before.